Dear friends, welcome to this episode of Call to Serve. We all are called to serve, but then there are few who have answered God's call. In this episode, we talk about the few chosen ones who share their life as a priest, the challenges that they face, and the most interesting, beautiful parts of their life. So today we have with us Father Ashley Kutino, who is from Goa and is part of Missionary of the Man. Father Ashley Kutino, welcome to this program of Call to Serve. Thank you. Father, we would like to hear your occasion story. If you go through the Bible, you see God has called so many people. And God has called them not because they are special. But God calls them in all their simplicity, in their weaknesses and uses them in a very special way for his special purpose. And that's true with me. I'm very glad that I'm here to share my vocation story, my call, my response to God's call. I remember as a young child, I had the desire to be a priest and mainly I feel it is because of my uncle. My uncle was a priest, my dad's younger brother and he loved and cared for me. Though I was very little to understand that love yet I still recollect those memories with him. He died immediately after his ordination, just six months after his ordination, he expired. It was a tremendous shock for the entire family. He was such a jovial person that along with him, all the other priest companions would gather in the house. And it was such a joy in the house. And I loved that atmosphere in the house that everybody gathered around the priest. And that desire was there in me. And immediately after his death, that uh, longing to be a priest kept growing within me and as a young boy all my with all my friends with all my cousins my brother we would play around and what games I would like was to play being the priest celebrating the Eucharist and that went on I feel that my mother was very supportive of me she also had this desire that I need to be a priest and she used to pray. I come from a very devout family. My mother is very devout. My dad was working abroad. So me along with my younger brother and my mom, we would be in the house. We were a joint family and my mother lived a very exemplary life and she taught us good values. And I remember many people in the village, many parents would come and say to my mother, only if our child was like your child, they would behave like your children. And I would feel good because my mother was doing her best alone to bring us up well. She would see that we do our daily prayers. Even before going to the school, she would make a point to tell us, attend the Eucharist. At least five minutes, you give time to God, then go for the school. And we did it though at that time perhaps it didn't mean much to me and I didn't understand it. Sometimes it would be boring, sometimes I would skip it. But now I remember that has helped me. All that my mother did for me, being in time for prayer, especially in the home, in the evenings, whenever we used to go to play with the bell, the church bell would ring at 7 o'clock and with that bell, we had to rush back home from wherever we would be, whether we were playing or doing some stuff. And we would pray the angelus followed by rosary. So with all this, I began to have a love for God, a longing to be a priest. And in the school, in my seventh standard, I recollect uh, some priests came to the school in our class and they gave a talk for us on being missionary priests. They shared their experience with us. They were Pilar missionary priests. And so that caught uh, my, uh, my interest and I inquired them. 
and they said if you wish to be a priest then you are most welcome to join so they distributed forms to everybody uh, asking all of us to write our vocations like what would we like to become in the future and immediately I had no doubt I wrote to be a priest that was in the seventh standard and then they said we'll call you for a camp so the two days camp is organized in the month of May during holidays so I was waiting for that opportunity to go for the camp I went for the camp and I had a good time because during camps it's all good stuff a lot of music entertainment and I, I was trying to still discern should I go for this or no everything looks lovely I attended another another uh, a couple of camps more uh, this was Pilar missionary camp and then I attended the diocesan camp as well uh, organized by the diocesan fathers in Goa and also the SVD camp so I attended three camps to discern where would I would like to yes. where would I like to go and I finally decided being a missionary would give me much joy serving the poor because uh, when the fathers were giving this uh, lecture about uh, the Pilar missionary life they said they cater to the poorest of the poor where Jesus is not heard so that became my goal I said I need to go somewhere far where no one has heard about Jesus that's uh, how I decided to join the Pilar missionary uh, Pilar being a Pilar missionary but then I was waiting for the call after the camp I needed to join for the 8th standard in the seminary and no call came up for me I joined my school back and was waiting why they didn't call me up in the camp it was everything was good I liked the camp some at least some of them should have called me and then one day I suddenly realized under my bed under in fact under the mattress I found a letter inviting which was an invitation for me to join the priesthood and I said how come I didn't get this uh, letter and it's there under the mattress then I inquired my brother my brother had seen that letter and he hid it because I would leave the home and go and he would be alone along with the mother so then I was very angry and then I said mommy next year I'm sure definitely going to go I was after my mommy mommy took me to the seminary and made it sure that next year I would join but everybody else was against me joining the seminary because everybody had in the back of their mind my uncle priest died and he should not go he may That's also go dead. and yes, die yes. so my grandparents were totally against my dad was also against yeah. the only person who supported me was my mother, Your mother. so yeah. with her support I joined after you joined the seminary uh, from formation to ordination did you have any second thoughts did you have any challenges out there which made you rethink this entire decision yes I joined in ninth standard I was quite I was very young at the time yeah and and the moment I reached my 10th standard I saw some of my companions they were having this uh, second thoughts about uh, their vocation uh, when we joined when I joined in ninth standard there were around 40 of us who had joined wow. and by the time we had completed 10th half of them had left so I was thinking is this uh, really uh, the call for me to be a priest or should I also leave and go so I had second thoughts and I was thinking as to what should I do now so I consulted my spiritual director I even spoke to my mom my mother who was not very happy and I, re I really was confused and I thought I would give a chance I wait for some more time and still discern my vocation so I was uh, now to decide which stream I would take for my 11th standard and after taking advice from my uncles and all they said if in case you take commerce if you leave it then you have good scope they gave me many options if you take this stream if you leave it then you can do some job and that will be fine for you so I decided I'll take commerce so in case I leave the seminary I can do yeah I can go for some job so 
with that uh, intention I went to the college to do my admission and once I was filling the form I had not carried my passport size photos. So they said you, we need photos for the admission. So I said I don't have this so they go back home and get the photos. So I went back home and by the time I reached home took the photographs it was time for the college to close down. So I said I need to go the next day. The next day I changed my mind instead of taking commerce I took arts. I don't know. Uh, so I was planning to take commerce. I took arts. I landed up in the arts uh, high secondary. And 11th, uh, 12th was fine for me. Nothing went bad. Uh, life was quite tough in the seminary with all the discipline, with the rules. Life was, as I grew, life was getting tougher and tougher. And the lure of the outside world also was entering seeing my friends, how they are enjoying their life and I have to be in one place, confined to the sem seminary. That was challenging, but then I said, it's okay, let me continue discerning my vocation. So, 12th standard passed and then I went for my pre-novitiate, that is another uh, step towards priesthood and then novitiate wherein an intense year of prayer that we have. So that was a very challenging year for me. Many of my friends after knowing who was going to be the novice master, yeah. the mentor yeah. left because he was a very strict person. So many of them before joining the novitiate they left and we were only 15 of us left for the novitiate. And that year I really had a very tough time because I really started discerning my vocation that time and I, at times I was feeling that uh, this was not the life for me and sometimes I would really fight with God, God give, give me a reason to remain, you answer my prayer and sometimes when I would sit in prayer I would find answers and I would feel like yes God is speaking to me, God wants me to continue and yet another moment the novice master being very strict would uh, sometimes be very harsh on us. For a little mistake, we had to you know, have a good shout from him. And sometimes I would feel maybe this is not the right this place for me. For you, yes. Yeah, but still, I don't know. The I would Your that was the year when I prayed a lot, and I would uh, I was influenced by this uh, divine music from Kerala, wow. and I would keep singing the praises and all that helped me in that year to offer myself to God, to offer all my difficulties, whatever. That year we had intense work and even my health was bad. I had in fact injured my leg and the novice master was not ready even to look at my leg. I needed to visit the doctor but he said I was trying to like just fool around and I want to avoid work and so I am trying to just uh, excuse myself. And, but it was too bad then he realized and I was admitted, I, I had a ligament tear and uh, things went on. Further I joined the college. So during college it was uh, really challenging because more and more of my friends were thinking of leaving and going. And many of them had left because most of them said I did my college in Nagpur. So once you reach college, half of you will leave and go. Yeah. So during the time of philosophy, we had all these ideas about religion and God changed with the philosophy. Some of us grew in our faith, whereas some of us begin to question God after doing our philosophy. Yeah, questioning our vocation. And then during those years, five years in Nagpur, I really had second thoughts to continue because majority of them were leaving but still I was in two minds every now and then I was going back to my younger days I was thinking I tried to leave but again God was telling me go ahead I am with you so believing in God's God's grace I tried to move forward I said no matter what comes I will move ahead I know I am doubting my vocation, let me see, let, me, let God give me a concrete, no, uh, 
concrete uh, explanation for uh, for what I am called for. Yes. So I continued. Father, even though you faced so many challenges, but you never wanted to step back, your personal uh, prayer and your memories somehow got you through this entire journey. That's really, really inspiring. And also, Father, uh, when you got ordained, is there any particular theme that you had? Yes, I chose the theme for my ordination, Lead me, O Lord, in thy steadfast love. Wow. Because God was leading me throughout through all the stages. Yeah. Yes. So that was the theme I chose. Yes. But as a priest as well, you've been a priest for eight years. And a priest of life is not just a pair of roses. I'm sure you'd have faced a lot of challenges as a priest too. Is there any particular challenge that you would like to share with us? As a priest, being a missionary priest is always challenging. My first posting was in Gujarat, a very challenging mission. We had hardly about 10 or 12 Catholics maybe in that place and, and we were surrounded by all the Hindu families there and practicing my faith as a priest was indeed difficult there and we, would, we had no chapel, no church. So we used to go and celebrate masses in people's houses and I had to carry the trunk with all the things for the mass mm -hmm. on my head and the table for the mass one side and walk at least 10, 20 or sometimes half an hour and go to somebody's house on Sundays to celebrate mass. And once I would reach their house, they would say, Father, we want to go to the field, we don't want mass. And then I would feel depressed. Is my being my first year of priesthood? I would long to give Jesus to them, and they are not ready. They want they want to go to their fields to do the work. And sometimes I would sit under the trees, celebrate mass alone. alone. Yeah. So that was some sometimes depressing for me. But at the other times, it was also interesting going walking through the fields, going far villages, and celebrating mass for the people. Yeah, this is one of the challenges and besides that many other challenges right now I am headmaster of a school and a coordinator for around 13 schools and the biggest challenge we are facing there is the government is against us yeah, and our teachers are not getting salaries for the last 16 months yeah, and everything is stopped and we have been uh, in a week, at least three times, I'm in the education department and trying to, yes, and it looks like, sometimes it looks like God is not answering our prayers. God is really testing us, you know, and because the whole administration is against us only because we are working for the poor Adivasi people. You know, so we are working among the Adivasis. So somehow they don't want people to come up in life and we are working for them so it's very challenging. Well father as a missionary priest fighting for these people out here with the government it is very very difficult. During this time how do you have the strength to even go and fight for them? Sometimes I feel these difficulties really help you as a person to understand your call better. Because sometimes as priests, we see ourselves as proud people. And when we go to the government officials, they put you down and say, you are nothing for them. You are nothing in front of them. So we begin to really realize that we are just ordinary people chosen by God. And in spite of all these difficulties, I feel we get an opportunity to stand for who we are. Nah? That God has chosen and we are standing for him. To stand for the people, to stand for a cause. No, we don't give up. No, if you stand for justice, you have to stand alone. And so, I feel that every time I go, I go to the office with a big cross. So I know if they are insulting me, it is not me they are insulting. Yes, Christ, Je Christ is with me. Jesus is with me. So, Jesus is my strength. And if at all I am here for this, I thought of coming for the retreat, especially for to pray for this cause. I said, God. I'll come to you to answer the prayers 
of your people please yeah please give me strength so in fact this challenge is strengthen has definitely has strengthened, strengthened me in more. my prayer life and given me a no, because even the teachers have lost faith in God they said every time I tell them pray to God is it how many times to be God doesn't answer your prayers and it becomes really challenging to give them an answer yes. and then I really have to go sit and pray and find an answer with because God the waiting period can frustrate a lot yes. of them and to have strength and courage at that time is even more almost impossible yes. for a lot of them father in the midst of all these challenges fighting for the poor fighting with the government and uh, telling people to have faith in God and encouraging them to pray and you go back and you do your personal prayer to get some strength Father in the midst of all these challenges uh, are there any cherishing moments to how being a priest is really wonderful that's the best call that I have received from God I am thankful to God before being a priest I doubted I had so many doubts but after becoming priest I really cherish my vocation you can reach out to so many people you feel that everybody is yours and people accept you as theirs as Jesus said if you leave your father mother brothers sisters you will get hundred folds in return that's what I'm experiencing the love of the people sometimes I remember when I was in Arunachal Pradesh we had to walk 10 hours to reach villages it was so tiring climbing through the hills and leeches biting you the rains walking 10 hours at a stretch was really difficult but once you reach the village the people come and embrace you they feel as if God has come to their place so that joy that you get is really wonderful that cannot be explained in words Father as a missionary priest it has been such a difficult journey for you yet you have cherished this call so much and that's incredible Father what is your vision for the church? my vision for the church is the same as what Christ intended yes that the church should give his message to the ends of the world that's what we are trying to do no and the most important thing today the church has to be really witness to Christ to his message and as priests and as a church we have to leave this message through our lives only then we can truly be Christ's messengers and his message to the world that's amazing father father this program has been watched by a lot of youth and family members is there any particular message that you would like to tell them about discerning the vocation the message I would like to give for the youth is that they need to try God in their life because if they have God in their life they have everything they might have everything fancy in their life today but if they don't have God then li life is meaningless and being a priest is really wonderful you might have so many choices in your life you might have so many dreams in your life but if you dream to be a priest you can work wonders in the lives of people you can truly be God's messenger and message to the people father Ashley Coutinho thank you so much for sharing with us your beautiful journey with Christ and uh, the way you explain about your calling and this journey how it has been for you when I look at it it is so challenging where you had to carry the tables where you had to go to places where there were no people and celebrate the mass still your cherishing moment in your life is choosing Christ that is amazing father thank you so much father again dear friends now we have heard Father Coutinho's life journey with Christ. It has not been easy, but yet, as a missionary priest, he travels around, goes to places where there are no people and still celebrates Mass. And he finds his strength only and only through his personal prayer and with his childhood memories. Dear friends, let's all together pray for all the missionary priests out there, as their life has never been so easy. But together we can pray for them.